Okay, we'll start a review here of some of the things that we've done. Uh, let me share my screen. All right, here's your LS commands. See what's in files with your RM, your C remove file, CP copy one file to another. CD tilde and CD are the same. They both take you to home directory. Um, that's the structure of the, file, of the directories. You know that you can go directly to a place with slash or you can go relative to where I am by starting off with dot dot slash. Um, we have a bunch of commands, copy, remove, move, right? The remove deletes the thing, move changes its name, but if it, or it, it can also overwrite, because if you change its name to something that already exists, then move will delete the thing that already exists. LN creates a link or a shortcut, you might call it. There's two kinds, symbolic and hard. RMDIR deletes a directory. MKDIR creates a directory. Uh, you don't ever need to use RMDIR. You can just use RM minus R because that's recursive. And the recursive for the, the RM minus R will not only delete uh, the contents of directories, it will delete the directory itself because it has to. Because if, if you want to go down, if you want to delete something that has lots of subdirectories, then in order to do that, you're going to have to delete all the directories. Okay. Touch creates a file, man shows the manual pages. Um, you have cat show a file more or less to slowly go through a file. WC word count tells you what's how many lines, numbers, numbers of lines, numbers of letters and words are in the program. Head tail. That displays the first or end or blast part of a file. Sort, sorts the file unique, removes repeating lines in a file, but only if those lines are adjacent. File prints the type of file it is. Strings prints all the printable strings that are in the file. PS shows you all the processes that are running. Locate and locate finds the file that you're looking for on the system. Uh, which tells you which of the versions of the soft of the program that you typed will be run, which location, which which version of the program it is, and what location it it resides. If you type, for example, um, WC, you might have two different ver two different programs called WC, one in one directory, one in another directory. Which will tell you which one is actually going to get run. Where is even if it but only checks the path which, but where is. Um, I think that where is has predefined configuration file that tells it where to look. But anyway, it looks for, maybe it only looks also in the path. I'm not sure. But it looks for where something is. I think where is will just give a list of all the places that it finds. Whereas right. which will sh show the one that it's actually running. Right. I think you're right. Where is will show you all of them, but only in the path, not everywhere. It only won't look places that are not in the path, which locate will do. Locate doesn't necessarily look only in the path. Where is only looks in the path. Date. Tells you the date and the time, gives you a timestamp. DU is disk usage, how much disk you're using. Quota is how much of the your allotted disk quota are you using. S copy is copy remote. Um, curl and WC allow you to get W get, sorry, allow you to get all the data from a website, get its whole page. Diff shows the differences between two files, shows you which lines are in one file, but not in the other, and which and, and the same way backwards, which ones are in the other, but not in the one. Kill, remember what kill, we just talked about that, it sends a signal. There's certain signals you can send to a process. You have to have the process ID. So you do kill minus the number of the signal, space, the PID of the signal you wanna send. Time allows you to time the running of a program. So you can see like starting a stopwatch. Last shows you the last users to have logged in. 
uptime tells you how long the system has been up, and you name prints the name of the system or in actually like when you say nine, system up from when I turned powered it on last. Yes. From total. Okay. From when you powered it on last. You know, a Unix system you're never supposed to turn off. You don't have to reboot it. You know, Microsoft, you have to reboot to install stuff. Uh, Win Windows would, sorry, my, uh, Unix is offended by the mere thought of such a thing. You don't have to turn off a system just to install new software. So therefore your system could be running for without ever turning it off for a year. Did you That's hear the new news about Windows and for Unix users? They're, they're moving more into the, like the pseudo command where you can install stuff without going through the Microsoft store. Uh-huh. Okay. Maybe it'll be a good thing to use that, that operating system. Last shows the listing of the last you just logged in. Uh, your name is the name of your host. What do you call it? My husband. Uh, sorry. Uh, last shows the listing of the last user login. Uptime, how long? You name the name of the machine. Mount minus L lists all the disks that can be mounted. DF shows you how much disk free space there is on the system. Or, uh, yeah. You can also give it DF and then you give it like a dot. And then it'll tell you on the current file system. All right, that's lecture one. See, now it's all easy. All right, Unix systems lecture two. It seems like we skipped something, but maybe we did. Did we skip something? I don't know. Pipelining. So you can use this pipe symbol to send the output of one command to the next command, etc. Here's echoes, just echoes whatever you type, types back for you. TR takes letters and switches them to capital letters. Now there's TR to the transformation on the letters. You can transfer, you can transform like capital, little a to capital letter. Or here I did examples of changing the, all the letters A, B, C to one, two, to the numbers one, two, three. So you see this two for brown or B. More examples of TR, cut allows you to cut vertically in columns a file. So for example, if I do cut minus F1 on a file, this place the first field each line. So you get a vertical column of the first field. Echo A colon B pipe cut minus D displays the second field of each line using the colon as the field separator. So the D stands for delimiter. And the limiter is a colon. And I echoed first A to A and B into it, so it had something to work on. So now it cuts, and it only prints the second field. In this case, that's the letter B. Here I'm echoing A, B, C with spaces, and I'm checking, I'm doing cut. Um, See, this means the first field and the third field. So it's going to print AC. Actually, it's not going to print AC because what is mine? Oh, yeah. Sorry, it is. Yeah. Okay. 
We have bash variables. And we say like A equals hello. Remember, no spaces here. Then echo A again, hello. Echo A again. A equals A dollar dollar. A L. In other words, I can redefine a variable using the previous variable. Yeah. Okay, how do I? Maybe can make it. This is already better. Aiden, this batter in the refrigerator. I gotta take a break. Let's come back at six thirty. Okay. Eat the batter raw. <laughs> what? Said batter. Don't eat the batter if there's uh, raw eggs. Oh. Unless you're, for some reason, unless you're a cat, then you can eat rice. Never heard that. Uh, the recording's still going. Wanna... Can you? Um, yeah, we must remember to tell the head of the department to schedule these classes a little bit more spread out. Um, but oh, you have a special rule that you have to have everything on one day or something? Just how they made the schedule. It's just their choice. All right. Okay. So view present. And now we're at to the fascinating topic of oh wait. We get here? How do we get here? Oh, I must have. Oh, I, I echo. So we were on TR cut. It gives you columns, basically. It cuts the, in other words, you say like this, cut field one, go, I'm teaching now. File.txt displays the first field of each line using a tab as the field separator. So only if there are tabs in the file will this work the way it is. And the minus F means the first field. I gotta use, so it's funny because field is used for that. So then they didn't want to use F for field separator. They could use FS, but they use D for delimiter. And so now I'm saying the delimiter is colon and the second field. Oh, we did this. And these are just more examples. Um, but look at this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, cut, um, minus C one through six, six through nine outputs a b c and then skips d e and then f g h in other words if i do c that means character one through three right in other words this c means character here i'm using a space here if i wanted to find the space as my field separate, I gotta say it. But here I'm doing the characters, okay. In other words, I can do characters of a string. So I can actually cut a string, not just cut a uh, set of strings. Okay, now we're bash variables. Again, you define a variable without spaces like that, A equals hello. If you wanna use the variable, you have to put a dollar. You can echo your variable, you can write your variable twice, and now you defined it as twice. Okay, is single and double quotes, single quotes, uh, single quotes will not interpolate, double quotes interpolate. So this will actually print dollar A, whereas this will interpret what dollar A means. And since dollar A, the previous example meant hello, hello, so it's gonna print hello. Um, and then we saw this special thing means this dollar, Parentheses, we're going to learn later actually, but this dollar percent, we already learned by now, this dollar parentheses means run. So I'm running the command echo UPG. So the answer, the output is UPG. But I put quotes around it. I'm essentially giving to echo 
echo is going to actually output the 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 meaning of, and it's going to the meaning of that. It's not going to. Whereas the second one with single quotes is not going to interpret. It's going to print out that string. It's going to say, "Oh, you want that string? I'll give you that string." Here, it's not. It's going to say, "Oh, what does this mean?" This means run echo. So this whole thing from the beginning of the quote to the end of the quote gets turned into UPG because echo running echo UPG will give me UPG. So then it'll become echo UPG again, and it'll be UPG. Um, file access modes. We talked about this. Read, write, execute. Seven means all three of them. It means owner can read, write, and execute. Everybody else has just got one, which is one means just execute. Um, so you can change mode. You can execute means that you can run the file. If it's a directory, what does execute mean? Somebody remember what execute means if it's a directory? No. If it, if it's a directory, what does it mean that it's executable or not executable? It means that you can it can go into it. If it's executable, then it's a directory. You can go into it. Like you can view the files in it. You can open exactly. You can open. Well, no, it doesn't mean you can view the files. That would be read. Executable for a directory means you can go into it. You can do cd directory name. And you and if it doesn't have executable. You try to do CD directory name, it'll say permission denied. But if you know the name of a file inside it, then you can still get to it. Um, you can't see. You might be able to. If it's got read permissions, then you might, then yeah, you could still list the contents of the file, but you couldn't go into it. That'd be weird, right? You could have the ability to list what's in it, but not move into it. Um, okay, redirection. So if you cat a file into another file, then the contents of this file will be in the other file. And if you do two arrows, it means a pen, it means a pen, don't overwrite. One arrow means overwrite. But on some systems, it'll ask you, do you really want to overwrite? In TC shell, it'll ask you, do you really want to overwrite? And if and then you can say yes and it'll overwrite. But if you say no, it won't overwrite. But if you don't want it to ask you in TC shell, you can write arrow exclamation mark other file that means force the exclamation mark means force the overwrite i don't don't ask me just overwrite essentially it means i know what i'm doing that's only in tc shell and bash uh, a single error overwrites always look what you can do here cat file 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 you can send three files to one file and they'll be appended even though i only wrote one single one it's sending all three of them to the file so they'll be first the first and second the second and then last third file um, now, now we have redirection of the standard out. So the normal way to do it is like, in other words, when you well, catting a file is not going to have an error message, but it could. If you do cat a file and the file doesn't exist, it's an error message. It'll say file not found. So that normally, if, if you would if you would just do that, it'll print not onto, the, onto the screen, file not found. If you put an arrow into out, you might think, oh, I'll see that message, file not found. The answer is you will see it. You know, sorry. You might think that, that that file not found will go into out, but it won't because that, fi that file not found is an error message. It's not a regular print. Only the regular print goes into out. So notice if the file does exist and the cat has something in this file, it'll go into the out. Where will the error message file not found? To the screen. But if you want that error message to go somewhere else, like then you can write two, means the standard out, I mean, it means the standard error. Send two into the file called error. So if you made a file called error, you can make the file called anything you want, but now there's now the file not found message won't go on the screen. It'll go into error two. So the contents of the file, if it exists, will go into out and the error messages will go into error. If you want them to both go into the same file, then you could write ampersand error. There's another way to get them both to go to the same file. You could write, put the first, put the contents into out and then 
put two into one, into whatever one was. Into the, in other words, since, and since one is already going to out, it'll also go to out. Okay. Um, and here we have this running. You can run a command. You can say A equals some command. And then if you put it in back quotes, these special back quotes means run the command. And the output of that command should be defined, A should be defined as the output of that command. You can do the exact same thing with this newer system with a dollar, with a dollar sign parentheses that, and close parentheses. That means run the command. That's what we saw before. Um, and there's a slight difference between the two, but uh, it's not worthy subject to discuss now, but because it's not important really. But there is a slight difference um, on how it works. File globbing. So file globbing is like using wildcards to remember file names. So you can do ls core star, and that means anything that starts with core. Or ls star dot h means anything that anything, and then uh, that ends with a dot h. And then you can do ls dot dot slash. Now dot dot means the directory above. So dot dot means the directory above, and then under that directory above, look for in that directory above, look for a file that starts anything but ends dot h. This is all file. This is well. This is the dot dot is not really file globbing, but but it's it's like directing you directory directory directing. Um, ls program question mark c question mark means a single character, so this will find any file that has the word program, followed by a single character and then dot c. If it's just program with, so it'll find programs program one program two, but it won't find program dot c. It'll just find program one dot c. All these are profile globbing. You see the special the special characters, and the uh, but there's other things because this is different from regular expressions, which we'll talk about later. Here we talk about regular expressions. So regular expressions is a complicated subject, but a very important one. You find you'll have you'll have in a lot of languages like PHP a, a, a function that allows you to interpret regular expressions to allow you to use regular expressions to match a word in 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 unix we generally use grep with the regular expression see because global regular expression in print so we'll do something like grep you know hello world but we put a dot here and the dot here has a specific meaning in regular expressions it means any character so it could be wood w o u l d or it could be world and it'll grep for that string in the file called file. The space here, I have to put a backslash in front of so that otherwise it will think it's like, it will get confused. It'll think the file name is world. It'll think it's just scrapping for hello. Or I could put it in quotes. Um, but let's go back to regular expressions. So you can group, let's say you wanted to look for anything, you know, that you wanted to find either big or bog. So you can say, well, for example, we want to find three letters that start with B and ends with G, but is not big or bad. Yeah. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's say if we wanted to find Dafka big and bad, big and bad, big and bad. We wanted to find those two. So how would we do it? We would write search for B and then brackets I O without this little character. Brackets I O G. That would mean anything that starts with B, ends with G, and has either one of those letters, I or O. And you don't have to have just two letters. You could have A E I O G U. You could have all the letters of the alphabet, A to Z little and A to the Z big. And that would be like if it's any letter, but it was, again, it's a single letter, but it's giving you an option. So the brackets means one, choose one of these. You could also do a range of numbers like two to eight. When you see this caret inside, it means not that. So that means B followed by something which is not I, O, and then a G. So it would not match B, G, because B, G has nothing there. It has to have something which is something, and that something has to be not an I or an O. It could be a space, it could be a dot, 
could be anything but not an I or an O. A dot matches any single character except the new line. Now, once you have these options, you can multiply them. Let's say you want to find Dafka, a word that starts B. You forget about this care, pretend it's not there. So B, you want to find B-I-O-G, but you want to find with one or more, with, with two of these, Dafka two I's or O's. So it could be B-I-I-G, B-O-O-G, or even B-I-O-G or B-O-I-G. Any possible way of having two of them. So how would you do that? So you have what's called a multiplier. So you'd simply write parentheses instead of five, two parentheses, braces really, after it. So it would look, I don't have an example of it here, but yeah, we do. A-E-I-O-U, parentheses, two, close parentheses. That means any two of those eyes, it could be A-A, A-E, A-I, could be E-A, could be O-O, any two. So you, but you have to put that after the, so the choice. So it multiplies the optional choices here. That's why it's called a multiplier. So two in a, a number in a parent in a braces means how many of them you want. You could also do two with a comma, which would mean two or more. Now you also have some. You could also do two comma and then not not just leave it blank, but write a seven, and that would mean two to three. And you also have some like shortcuts, which are like star, which here means zero more times, as opposed to in file globbing, it means, well, in file globbing, it also means, no, in file globbing means followed by anything. It's a wild card. Here's not a wild card. It's a multiplier here. And it's saying zero or more. So if you, it'd be very dangerous, it's very dangerous to use that star because zero or more means it's not there at all. So then you're, if, and back to my example, if I would write a star after, before this G and after the choices, and again, pretend the carrot's not there. So then it would be B, I, O, zero more times. So it would match big and box, but it would also match B, G. Because that's zero times. So the star is careful, is, is, is confusing. So therefore, if you want it to be one or more times, we don't use the star. We use the plus. That means what, at least one time. And then the question mark has a special meaning as a multiplier. It means zero or one times. It's very rare that you're going to want that. Either not at all or once, but not more than once. Okay. They have such a possibility. And then you have some special uh, shortcuts, really. Shorthand characters. Please. So instead of writing all the that's zero to nine, you can write backslash D to mean any digit. And capital backslash D means anything that's not a digit. And similarly, backslash W means any word type characters, things that could be in words, which are, for some reason, it's A to Z, A to Z, zero to nine, and underscore, but not dash. Very strange to me. Because dash could be in a word like, you know, hyperallergenic. You know, there's a dash there. It's like hyphen. Anyway, watch W, capital W means anything that is the opposite, anything that's not one of these things. And S and S means S mean, little s means any white space, which would be space, tab, line break, any kind of white space. And capital S would mean the opposite. So backslash D, you have to have a backslash in front of them. Because otherwise it thinks you just want a lot of Ds. Right? If you just write D plus, it'd be one or more Ds. Actually, yeah. But backslash D means find one or more of the adjacent digits. One or more adjacent digits. In other words, D is, is a digit. And then a plus means one or more. And then we have anchors, which are, there's two anchors, the beginning of a line and the end of a line. This means, the, the caret means the beginning of a line, dollar means end of a line. So for example, if I'm looking to match caret nachum, that would mean any, any uh, line, uh, now we're talking about a line. If we're talking about beginning of a line or end of a line, we're talking about a line. So any line that begins Nachum, could be Nachum, Danzig is a good teacher. Uh, but it wouldn't find something like, I like Nachum, Danzig, because that would not be the beginning of the line. And then you could do, let's say, a line that ends Danzig. 
And then you could give it a choice, either little d or big D. Um, you can multiply a whole word also by putting it in parentheses. So I multiplied the word one or two times. But notice I said that also I added the starting starts with Nachum and ends with Nachum one or more times. So that means it's only going to match a line that is just Nachum or Nachum Nachum. Now, we said already that grep is useful for using those regular expressions. We can grep a file for a regular expression and it'll return us all the lines that match, all the whole lines, not just the match, but the whole line. So that is, grep will give me a line from a file that matches a certain regular expression pattern. Find is totally different. Find, not even sure why I put them on the same page, except for find you can, well, find also you can use regular expressions with. But find is, find me a file whose name is Fred. And where do you look? In directory slash and everything beneath beneath it. <clears throat> so the back, so the slash here means what directory to look in. I can do dot, and that would mean the current directory. Um, so there's grep and egrep. Uh, pretty ex e is for extended grep. They're pretty much the same, except that they're, except that these are special care. These special characters, if you want to search for them. Um, you have to use backslashes. I think I give an example here. Yeah. If you use grep, all right. So if you use grep minus e, then it's the same as e grep. And then you could just write, find me a grep for me, a line that starts N O and then is followed by either. Notice we use the words here now because they're in parentheses, not brackets. No fork or no group. I'm looking for either of those words. No fork as one word or no group. Now, no space. No fork, no group. In other words, it starts no. And then I don't care what the ending is. But that's a start. No fork. And look in the file etc group. Now, that's how I would do it in grep with the minus e flag, which is essentially e grep, extended grep. The minus e stands for extended grep. Now, I could also do. It, the same thing in grep, the old grep, but then I have to backslash all these things. I have to tell it, I mean, I have to tell it, um, I give it backslash parentheses, backslash, otherwise it would look for that, you know, for those left characters, those special characters like parentheses, it would look for that in these, in the file. And then I'm, I'm not interested in looking at the file, I'm just telling grep, that this is a word now. So I have to backslash all these special symbols and I have a list here of what symbols you have to backslash. Also a question mark, a plus, a brace, a, a pipe, a back, uh, this one, a missing one, which is the other, you know, well, I'm missing the other brace here like that. I have both parentheses. Okay, so all of those has to be backslash. Um, so here's some examples. If I do egrep of big BIO one or more, it'll give me, it'll find me big and bog. It'll also, right, it also would find me B O O G. If I do egrep not IO, then it'll find me bag and also bag. If I do not IO two or more times, then it won't find me bag anymore because it has to be two or more times. So it'll only find me the two A's. Here's what the file contains. All right, I'm going to stop there. That's the review for today.